What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're gonna do an in-depth look at Tesla's Q1 2017 10Q earnings report. Figure out, take a little more deep dive into the financials. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. Tesla's cash balance is at 4 billion at the end of the quarter, up about 700 million quarter over quarter. That is partially because they raised a bunch of money. The other piece of that is a lot of the spending that they said they were gonna do for Model 3, which people have been expecting, has pushed back to the summer. We haven't seen a lot of the Model 3 expenses come in yet, so that's why Tesla's cash burn looks light. But in reality, they're gonna have a bunch more expenses and this 4 billion cash cushion really isn't as big as it looks. Customer deposits in the quarter were down and a lot of people are thinking that this means Model 3 demand is declining, but based on the conference call, it looks like this is totally not the case. Um, although deposits were down from 663 million to 616 million, with the reservation for a Model 3, you'll need to put down $1,000. So there's still potentially more than 600,000 reservations on the books. Yeah, and the decline in that was explained by the fact that they were still getting through a backlog of Model X orders in the customer deposits. And now that they've gotten through that, I'm assuming that most of this customer deposit number is now Model 3. Long-term debt, can't avoid it. Tesla's got a bunch of debt. They're growing quickly. I mean, not that much debt given their size, but they are adding debt and that's the reason why their cash balance is looking strong. About 7.1 billion in long-term debt and capital leases. And they have a bunch more liabilities as well, but that's just the long-term debt portion. And I don't think this is like a crazy debt number at all, but I do think it's worth noting that Tesla does have debt. And if they can't grow their business and they can't grow the Model 3, then that, they're gonna be in trouble. Revenue, this is the fun part. Automotive revenue went from 1 billion to 2.3 billion, more than doubling in the quarter. This this is on the, a testament to the growth of Tesla's Model S and Model X. Both of them have done incredibly well in each of their respective categories, and that's leading to massive growth. I think they were still having production issues with the Model X in Q1 last year. That caused them to not be able to build as many as they wanted. And now that they've gotten that all ironed out, look at what revenue is doing, more than doubling. A great sign. Energy generation and storage revenue was up from uh, 22.7 million to 213 million, almost 10X. The bulk of this increase is due to the Solar City acquisition, which is now being integrated into Tesla's financial statements, which wasn't in Q1 last year. So even though this look, growth looks crazy, it's not what you think it is. It's just that they're finally including Solar City in the business. Services and other revenue more than doubled. Um, Tesla has this strategy where they only want to operate their services and like car maintenance at break even. They don't want to make money from having to fix your car because I think that screws up incentives, which I think is smart. But um, so you can expect to see service revenue grow along with car sales. And just if there's more Teslas on the road, they're gonna need to do more service. And so this is gonna kind of grow naturally with automotive revenue, but I wouldn't look too much into it given that the fact that it's, they're trying to make it gross profit neutral. Total revenues, when you add all that up, significantly more than doubled, mostly because of the, the added bump of Solar City, they were up like 130%. Crazy growth. I love Elon, not just because I love him, but because he's putting up numbers. Gross profit, another really cool metric to watch, almost tripled in the quarter or about two and a half X from 252 million to 670 million. Gross profit is killing it. Oh shit, mic broke. Whoops. If we annualize Tesla's gross profit number of 667 million, we get to about 2.7 billion annually in gross profit. And remember, this is a number that's more than doubling year over year the last quarter. So I look at that just to kind of gauge the earning power of Tesla's business. And you know, their expenses are growing so quickly with SG&A and R&D to accommodate all of these future vehicles. I think it's interesting to look at the gross profit number as the profit or earnings power potential of what they're currently doing. Um, and the fact that that's growing so quickly is really promising and something I like to see. Loss from operations. So their loss from operations grew slightly from 248 million to 257 million. Is this the end of the world? No, they're investing like crazy. And a lot of these expenses like R&D and SG DNA that went up like crazy to make up for that increase in gross profit. We're all there to support the Model 3. So we're not getting any gross profit from the Model 3 because they haven't started selling it yet, but they are doing expenses like building out the supercharger network, building out more retail stores, hiring more people and training them in those retail stores and doing more R&D on future programs. So this is all a lot of these expenses, even though they're not in CapEx and they're in the income statement are probably going towards future earnings power. So that's why I think it's tricky to look at Tesla because they're growing so quickly and the business model is changing so quickly that it's hard to gauge how profitable it would be if they stopped growing. I think it's important to remember that a lot of these SG&A and R&D expenses are in fact in preparation for the Model 3 and future vehicles and not indicative of how profitable Tesla would be just based on the Model S and Model X. 
And building on this, the cash used in operating activities declined from 250 million to 70 million. So this is kind of trying to break it out in the way that like, okay, if we only took the, the revenue that Tesla needed right now, what would be happening? They would only be burning 70 million, a dramatic decrease from the 250 million. Once again, I think this is a good sign and shows that Tesla's core business is really lean and mean. But moving down, the cash used in investing activities increased significantly from 233 million to 926 million. This is because they're building out an incredible amount of factory capacity for the Model 3. In the equity incentive plans, I thought this was interesting to note, they mentioned that there's about 17 million underlying outstanding equity awards. That means there's stock options worth 17 million shares that could be redeemed at some point in the future. So when you think about calculating Tesla's valuation and the share count, I always like to include these additional employee stock options. And that's why for a lot of my valuations, I use a number like 200 million shares is outstanding, which is way more than they have now. I think it's like 165 plus the 16, that's only 181, but I'm accounting for future dilution and future raises, and I like to be super conservative here. But um, I think it's important to note that Tesla does have a significant amount of employee stock options outstanding. I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, I don't think it's out of whack with where they should be, but it will impact the company's future share count. So make sure if you're crunching the numbers on how many shares Tesla has, you include these stock options. Building on the stock option thing, I think it's really interesting to look at Elon Musk's compensation package from 2014, which indicates that they are projecting that they can hit a gross margin of 30% annualized for a three year period. This is kind of on a broader scale, when I think about Tesla's valuation and earnings power, real simple. I think they can hit a 30% gross margin for the overall business based A, on what they've shown now with a slight improvement and Elon Musk's equity incentive awards, which I think are designed for him to hit. Yeah, and so I, I believe that this 30% gross margin will be sustainable. They will need two thirds of that gross profit will go directly into running the business, R&D, SG&A, and then they'll have a 10% or so operating margin. So then if we annualize their 2.6 billion in revenue, get about 10 and a half billion, add 10% of that, they're doing about 1.5 billion in earnings, the company's worth 55 billion, that's like a 40X PE ratio. So that's not really that crazy. So that's how I look at Tesla, like, okay, their earnings power is about one and a half billion at their current size. If they're worth 55, that's a 40X ratio, but that earnings power could triple in the next two years because of the Model 3 or next one year. Yeah, I'm paying a high price for it, but I think the growth is really, really justifying this. They grew over 100% last quarter. Like they're putting up the numbers to prove it. If you put a peg on this, the 40 PE looks really cheap because I think they're gonna be able to grow at 100% this year and next year. Interesting to note that Elon Musk's equity incentive package shows the gross margin hitting 30% or above 30% for a sustained period. And that's kind of the backbone of my thinking of how this business model will evolve around that number. Breakdown, geographic sales, China is on fire. And this is a part of the business that is was killing it. Um, Tencent invested in the company, kind of legitimizing Tesla's entry into China and the potential that they have there, in my opinion. So t China was almost 20% of Tesla's sales in the quarter. Revenue jumped from 119 million in Q1 last year to 504 million. That's more than a triple in uh, year over year in revenue from China. Every other region showed incredible growth as well. So Tesla's on fire everywhere, but really important note that China seems to be becoming a bigger and bigger and more important piece of their business by the day. Just in the overview of the business, I think this is new. They added in that they're working on future vehicles and now they actually specify an 100% electric semi-trailer truck. To me, this is the first step towards legitimizing that product and really putting it out there that this is gonna happen. And now they're putting it in their SEC filings. They're not just saying we're working on a bunch of future vehicles. They're saying we're working on future vehicles and specifically this 100% electric semi-trailer truck, which is gonna be unveiled in September, cannot wait for that. Anyway, I thought it was interesting here. It still looks like they're on track. Um, just like they said in the conference call, they wanna be building 5,000 vehicles per week in 2017, 10,000 vehicles per week in 2018. Now, remember, this is way, way, way far ahead of what Wall Street thinks Tesla can do. Uh, Adam Jonas, my favorite Tesla analyst, works for Morgan Stanley. I think he only has Tesla selling like 150, 200,000 total cars in 2018. Like, what? Tesla is telling you they're gonna be building 5,000 vehicles per week by the end of this year. That's a 250,000 unit per year run rate. And they're scaling that to a 500,000 year unit per run rate in the middle of 2018. And if, you, if we get, we're gonna to get to this part in the filing where they actually say that they wanna produce 
500,000 vehicles in 2018. Like they're putting this in the filing telling you that. No Wall Street analyst is predicting this. If Elon gets anywhere close to hitting his goal, every single analyst is gonna need to tweak their models up in a massive way, hike price targets. This is gonna be the bull story that's gonna drive Tesla to 500 per share when they do deliver 500,000 Model 3s per year. And Elon Musk actually underestimated the production targets that Wall Street thinks are way exaggerated. But this has happened time and time again with Tesla, so don't be surprised. Oh, very interesting. Energy generation and storage. They, they, so a lot of talk has been happening that, that solar city has kind of the growth objectives of solar city that they put out when they were an independent company have not been hit since Tesla acquired them. And I don't think that's actually a bad thing because if you look at what they're saying here, rather than prioritizing the growth of solar energy deployments at any cost, which it sounds like what they were doing, we are selectively deploying projects that have higher margins and generate upfront cash. They're being smart and selective about which projects they deploy, trying to rein in the solar city business that was a massive loser and like bleeding all this cash capital and probably recklessly spending and deciding which projects to go into. But now I really like the fact that they're kind of like tightening the belt on solar city, making it leaner, making it more profitable and streamlining that operation. And like even more on that, the solar city had this whole call center door to door, extremely expensive customer acquisition model. Now they can just plug in directly to Tesla's store network. They're hiring more sales reps and training them. And here they're saying say, they sell sales productivity improved by 50 to hundred percent just based on putting these solar products in the stores. Um, so they're fully staffing the Tesla stores with people who know how to sell the solar city products now as well. I just think this goes back to our broader thesis of Tesla's retail model is genius. They're gonna be able to roll out more and more products, leverage their retail concept as like a marketing platform and kind of like all in one place to go try, experience and explore and learn about each product. This is gonna make their stores more and more productive which with each incremental product they, they have. And so that's kind of why I love the leverage in Tesla's business model. Like all of the hard work with all these stores is gonna be built way before they maximize the product profitability of those stores. So as they introduce more and more products, the Model 3, the solar roof, better and better power walls, you know, the sales per square foot of their stores are just going to continue to climb and probably eventually rival Apple, rival Tiffany's, some of the best in the world. Here he is. We plan to build 500,000 vehicles in 2018. Nobody on Wall Street thinks that's going to happen. If it does, they're going to all need to mega readjust their price targets upwards. This is like the most important thing that I'm watching. Oh yeah, and everyone's like really hating on this whole battery storage thing because they definitely got hit in terms of battery revenue being disappointing this quarter. Um, and we're gonna get into that. But I think it's important to note that they only began producing lithium ion battery cells for energy storage products in the first quarter of 2017. Everyone's like, oh, they've been talking about the Gigafactory for years. Yeah, but they started building it in 2014. It's the gonna be the world's largest building. They built it from the ground up from scratch with this entirely new production process. And like three years later, they're rolling it out. And like, I don't know. So I just think people put too much pressure and expectations on Tesla to like do things immediately. When if you like take a step back and say, wait, so they had this crazy idea that they were gonna build the largest factory in the entire world and start building batteries cheaper than anybody else for their cars. Everybody thought they were insane. Now they're doing it and the ramp is just a little bit slower and people are getting impatient and they're saying it's a, a mess up. It's like, nah, like if you look at what we're doing, the progress they made building that entire factory, actually getting it to work, getting the cost down is happening. I think it's just still really early in the Tesla energy story. So that's why I, don't, I think it's important not to look too much into the margins, not to look too much into the revenue because I think it's super lumpy. And, and just kind of think about on a broader scale where Tesla's business is and how the demand for energy storage is trending and where they are in the market. This is the part that a lot of people are up in arms about. Energy storage and generation revenue increased by 191 million in the three months ended as compared to three months. Blah, 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 blah. This is primarily due to the inclusion of revenue from Solar City. Um, so partially offset by a de decrease in energy storage revenue of 17.4 million. Now, if you recall, energy storage and generation revenue during Q1 last year was 22 million. That means that th they only generated about 5 million in battery revenue in Q1 2017. Given by our calculations, they generate about 97 million of battery storage revenue in all of 2016, 5 million in one quarter, 20 million a year run rate is pretty disappointing on first glance and makes me like all this hype of the battery business is like, okay, well, you're only doing 5 million in revenue. You're worth 55 billion. Like this is just not going to move the needle and the gross margins are super low. So that's the story right now, but I'm looking at a different way, which is their deployments are massive. Like they're, they're working with Southern California Edison last year. They made one mega deployment um, in Q1. They made a mega deployment with the island of Kauai to take them off the grid with this huge solar farm or like partially off the grid. And Elon mentioned on the call that not all of that revenue, or I don't even know if any of it was recognized in this quarter, but it sounds like that's where all the capacity that they built this quarter went. So I, I, 
I, I don't want to look too much into this and say that their battery business is dying just because this quarter is bad because I think the production is scaling. It's just that the revenue recognition is weird. And so I think if you you read too much into it, if you think that their battery business is crumbling just because this one quarter looks off. Blended gross margin of Tesla, like I said, I think that 30% target is like long-term where they need to be. They're at 24.8% in the three months ended March 31st, getting kind of close, very high for a car company. This is the summary of cash flows. I think it's a great way to kind of look and understand the company of like, look, yes, Tesla is spending mass amounts of money, but they're doing it because they want to scale production from 76,000 units last year to 500,000 units in 2018, like in two years, that's like an 8x production increase. That's just absurd. And I think they're doing it incredibly efficiency with the capital they're spending and the way they're diluting. I've been very impressed with the way they're handling their like fiscal situation and financial engineering. And I think if you look at this breakdown, you'll see that the operating business is lean and is on the cusp of being really profitable. And if as their operating business grows with the launch of the Model 3, I think we're going to see positive operating earnings on a big scale from Tesla. Um, they're probably still going to be investing in CapEx, but this breakdown of how they're using their cash and how they're getting their cash, I think is really interesting because it shows you it's all being spent towards building out the future and the core business today is actually lean, mean, and almost running it profitable already. So I, and I was reading through the whole report and I almost thought they've left out the part of volume production of Model 3s. And remember, that's very important. In the 10K report, they included the fact that they intend to begin volume production and deliveries of the Model 3 this year. That means they wanna like have a significant amount of deliveries. Here they reaffirm that. We have announced our goal to achieve volume production and deliveries of this vehicle in the second half of 2017. So it looks like they're still sticking by this. And remember, nobody on Wall Street thinks this is gonna happen. I think Adam Jonas has them selling something like 2,000 or 10,000 Model 3s this year. That's not volume production. Tesla's telling you they're gonna sell a lot more. Yeah, so that kind of wraps it up. Uh, walk through the 10Q, looking at their quarterly results. Overall, I thought it was a great quarter, just another solid pace of execution for Tesla. Uh, the business model is about to go through so many changes as the Model 3 comes out that, um, I don't know, I'm just excited to see where the year takes us. Um, all eyes are when, the, if they can get the Model 3 rolling, production off the line. As of now, I don't want to jinx it, but according to Elon Musk on the conference call, it's looking like a bullseye. I am amped to be a Tesla shareholder heading into late 2017 as they ramp production and deliveries of the Model Model 3, like I think this is going to be epic. I think everybody who is doubtful of the energy storage business because of one crappy quarter is about to get totally surprised and flabbergasted when it becomes a bigger and bigger piece of Tesla's business. The gross margin gets to exactly where they say they're going to be. And yeah, anyway, see you guys next time. If there's anything I missed in the quarterly report, comments, questions, numbers, any ideas you have, let me know. If you haven't subscribed already, do it because we're coming out with more awesome videos. Anyway, that's the Tesla 10Q wrap up. See you guys next quarter.